Yo, it's your boy Vendetta, Vincenzo Gianni, looking a little French today with this little mustache. Wee wee, hey. Anyway, uh, on my way to Virginia again, uh, I think this is appointment number six. Yeah, March, April, May, June. Oh, I'm sorry, appointment number four. Um, I believe, I don't know. Anyway, I'm on my way back down to Virginia. And of course, adversity is going to be the name of this video because I'm about to explain to you what exactly Vin goes through just to get to Virginia for a an appointment. So yesterday, I'm sitting at the crib and I'm, I, I got out of work. I was painting at the county and um, I got done. I went straight over to get my hair cut, got the mohawk lit. Um, chopped off because it's time to um, get into my full grind mode for a job down here in Virginia when I'm down here. Um, then after that I went home and had to change my oil in my driveway in the rain, pouring rain, okay. Um, on top of that my boy John from Buffalo was down and I put my oil, my oil filter in a can of Restore in the back of his Ford Escape. Well, when I asked him to grab the stuff out of there so I didn't, he didn't take it home with him, he forgot to grab the oil filter. So then I had to just use the same oil filter until I get down to Virginia and get it in a garage and put a new one on, um, which may have cost me all my oil at that point because it may drip, you know, drip out or leak out. I don't know. I've never done it backwards like that. Anyway, um, then my friend Crystal stops over because her computer's acting up. So instead of leaving it like five or six, I left it like nine. Uh, I got to Pennsylvania to my homeboy, TJ. I got to his house in Pennsylvania, Nanticoke, uh, about 12.30. Chilled out with him. Uh, had a couple of shots. Just chilled out, watched a little Lost. We chatted. Um, and uh, I was getting a, a funny light on my... I was getting my engine light was coming on on the way down. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, no matter what I do in this life, there's... There's adversity Like I've got to constantly jump hurdles And move through obstacles in my life Every single day Like there's not one day that I can remember It just went smooth unless I slept all day And even then my dog would shit on the floor Like something always happens Like it's never going to stop But you know what I know that's why I'm one of the strongest people that, that exists Because I'm just saying like Come on man I, I don't get a freaking break you know, it's nerve-wracking. I cry about it. I'm upset about it a lot. You know, it's difficult all the time. Like, people don't give me a break. You know, uh, women, you, you like somebody, but they don't like you. You don't like somebody, but they like you. Uh, you're in love with somebody, but they don't love you. It's just like, what the fuck? Seriously. Like, what, when are people going to get their shit together? Like, good girls like bad guys. Good guys like bad girls, and they end up cheating on them, lying to them, causing insecurities. The fuck is wrong with America? Seriously, y'all's on some bullshit. Yeah, the things I'll do, the things I'll do, becoming a dad. You know, I'm stopping off just about every 40 to 65 miles to reset the engine light, hoping that my engine light don't blow on the way down. You know, three and a half hours of doing that. <laughs> so I mean, I stopped like three or four times to do it. Then, I go get the part this morning, and my buddy TJ's like, you know, who are you going to have fix it? I was like, I'm going to fix it. He's like, have you ever done it before? I was like, no, not this one. So I learned how to. I bought the part with little money. I got left. I only got enough in gas to get down there now. Um, and I fixed it myself with some tools I threw in the trunk. You know, I, I fixed it myself. And then guess what? I thought I fixed it because I have a little code reader for the engine light. And it told me a certain code, so I fixed the sensor, which took me about an hour or so. Um, and then it's doing it again now. Here I am on my way to Virginia at the bottom end of Pennsylvania, and it's still doing it. So now I have to stay at a certain speed limit so it won't do it. So I'm not certain what it is. Because now I just put a brand new part in it, and it's still doing it. All I can ask for is y'all pray for me out there in TV land, internet land, asshole land, whatever fuck land you're in. You know, I don't know. Just throw me a prayer. Hope for the best. I don't know. 
It's fucking crazy, the shit I gotta go through. And I just, I just wanna be a dad. I just wanna go down there and be a part of this kid's life like no other. You know, the mother is just, it's terrible. She's terrible to me. And you know, I've been talking it over with friends and my friends are getting aggravated and upset with her behavior and text messages and, I didn't expect it to be like this. You know, you know, I never really have any expectations. That's why I'm okay with whatever comes my way. Because I don't expect the best, I don't expect the worst, because if either one of them come, then I'll just deal with it when I get to it. But every appointment I buy her flowers. Every appointment I've bought her flowers. Or not flowers, there you go again. See, I'm, I'm off track. Every, every appointment I buy her a card and I put something sincere in it, like, I hope things work out for the best between us and for our child, uh, eat healthy, stay, stay stress-free and do the best you can, I'm here if you need me. Like, there are women out here that I know, and I don't have to be conceited about, I know for a fact, there are women out here that would never let me go if I had a chance with me. There are women out here that would cherish the, every word in that card, every petal on those flowers, every dollar I spend. But you know what? For some apparent reason, I get one pregnant that tells me she loves me, told me, should I say, tells me she's going to move to New York, and then tears it all out from under me at the very last minute. And I'm supposed to be okay with that. But you know what? She's giving me the one thing that I can't give to myself, and that's a kid. And I told her, she argued with me the other day through text message. She don't understand. She don't pick up the phone. Like, I don't want you guys to get the idea like I'm some saint because I'm not some saint. But she does not pick up the phone. She complains that I don't call her. But when I call her, it goes straight to voicemail. For eight years, I've been doing this. I've only had probably, seriously, 20 phone calls with her in eight years. Everything else is text. Text, 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 text. Or in, or in face to face. I don't want to do that no more. I'm tired. You know, I hurt, I cry every single day. At one point, even if I don't tear up and my eyes don't cry, my insides cry. Because I'm so tired of being treated like shit by most of y'all out there. Y'all are some fucked up people, seriously. Like, what the fuck did I ever do to any of y'all? Y'all can say I'm grimy. I ain't never been grimy to nobody in my own day. Yo, know, I have given the shirt off of my fucking back to so many people and walked around barefoot on, on fucking gravel roads for so many people. And what the fuck have you done for Vin? You know, I, I have to beg people, which is sad, to come visit me and hang out, people I thought cared about me, to come see me more often, make more visits, take time out of your busy fucking schedules to come see me because when I'm gone, I'm not coming back. If I go down there and this kid just so happens to not be mine for some apparent reason, out of God's green earth blue or whatever you want to call it, I'm moving to California. So fuck y'all. Fuck New York because I'm sick and tired of the bullshit. Y'all are not real friends and if you thought you were a real friend, you better step the fuck up. Because I have proved every day for my life for the past 10 or 12 years that I've been a true friend to even my enemies who have called me for advice. Oh, Vin, I'm sorry I fucked you over behind your back. I'm sorry I fucked your girlfriend while you weren't home. I'm sorry I wrote love letters to your girl telling her you're a douchebag, you were cheating when you weren't. You know what? Let me tell you something. <laughs> I forgive y'all. Seriously. I do. I forgive y'all. Because y'all's on some petty bullshit. We all make mistakes. I made the same mistakes when I was younger. I lost out on a lot of good people. But you know what? I'm better now. So fuck y'all. Get your balls right. Get your shit right. Grow the fuck up. Because you're not going to get younger. Adversity. I hop over that fucker every day. I'm like best friends with adversity. You know? You people out there that are worried about me, that stay saying prayers, that stay out there loving Vin and supporting me, I love you. I appreciate you. I cherish the fact that there are people out there that got a heart like me in some sort that are in recognition of what I'm doing, what I do every day. I don't have to drive down here for appointments. I don't have to put the extra miles on my car knowing that if it breaks down, I got nothing. But I do it. And I make nothing. I make something out of nothing every day. I sold my bed. I sold, I, I sold my, my furniture's about to be sold. I sold another bed. I'm selling everything I own to go down. And what if this kid's not mine? Have you ever thought of that? What if the kid's not mine? Nine months I spent beating myself into an emotional oblivion to find out it may not be mine. Let's just say I pray it's not, it's, it is mine. I want it to be mine. 
And sometimes I say, you know what, I may not even get a paternity test because to be honest with you, maybe this is the change I needed. Signing out. It's raw. It's real. It's Vincenzo Gianni. Holla.